Hey everyone, welcome to chapter six. This is the new chapter on the gases and the properties of gases and the gas laws. Uh, so we're gonna be calculating everything around gases. So these things that are around us, we can't see them, but we know they're there because we can experience them with our senses. If you wave your hand, you can feel the oxygen and the nitrogen striking your skin. And to do this, so we're gonna kind of set up some assumptions about these gases and how they act. And we're gonna refer back to this a lot. And this is called the kinetic molecular theory. And there's four things. And the first one says that individual gases have zero volume. So when I talk about individual gas particles, I mean one particle of oxygen, O2. So O2 is so, so small. This is very, very small. It is so small, we say it has zero volume. Now when we have a collection of oxygen, yeah, it takes a volume. We know that because we can blow up a balloon. But uh, one individual gas particle has zero volume. The second thing we're assuming is that gases always move in straight lines. So they don't kind of loop around a room. They're very, uh, their, their entire velocity, all their momentum is going in a straight line. And that does not change until they hit something else. The third thing is that no energy is lost in a collision. So if a gas particle were to collide with another one, okay, so two gases are coming together, uh, if one hits the other, there is no total energy loss. It is transferred. And think of this kind of like dropping a soccer ball with a tennis ball on top. The tennis ball goes launching. That energy was transferred from one to the other. And then finally, there is no attraction or repulsion. So gases do not attract one another and they do not repel one another. They're indifferent. They don't care about the other gas that's there. Um, so those are the four assumptions we're gonna come back to frequently throughout this chapter. And I'm, you're gonna be asked to explain gases using these four assumptions. And the last thing that we're gonna do in this particular section is we're gonna start looking at pressure. So we measure the amount of gas based on the pressure that it exerts on something else. And there's two units that we're gonna focus on. The first one is the atmosphere and this it, we're going to equate these two. So we have 1.0 ATMs or atmospheres. And the other one, this stands for millimeters of mercury or tor or bar. And all three of these units are equivalent to one another. So one millimeter of mercury is one tor, which is one bar. And when we compare the two in order to get these equal to one another, we need 760 of one of these units to equal one atmosphere. And you're gonna do conversions between those two very frequently. Now, why is pressure important? And this is something that's intuitive, we know this. So this, let's say this is the ocean down here. So we're at sea level. And we'll just call this space. Now down at sea level, we have one entire atmosphere above us. So the, the atmospheric pressure at the bottom or at the ocean on the beach is one atmosphere in general. Now there's weather variations and weather patterns that can change that, but in general, it is one atmosphere. And up in space, there is zero atmospheres. This is called a vacuum. And as you increase your altitude, so as we go up, Okay, your pressure will decrease. So as you get higher, there's less air above you and your pressure goes down. And that's why if we're in an airplane, so let me draw my sweet airplane. So here's a wing. Okay, so when, if you've ever been in an airplane and they do that safety information and they say, if there's a sudden loss of pressure, those oxygen masks fall down. That is because they need to pressurize that airplane. So we have a high pressure inside the plane here when there's low pressure on the outside. And that's to keep you safe. So again, as you go up, pressure will decrease. Same thing if you see guys climbing Mount Everest, they wear those oxygen masks. That's because there's very low pressure up here at the top of the mountain and there's high pressure down here at the bottom. So relative to different altitudes, pressure can change. And now conversions, these are just like we do chemical conversions. We're gonna be canceling units out and we're gonna knock out B and C because I forgot to update the questions. So we're gonna convert 755 tor into atmospheres. So if we do 755 tor and I set up a conversion, we are going to do tor on the bottom because I want those to cancel and we're going to change to atmospheres and our conversion factor was up here in the chart. So one atmosphere is 760 tor. So let me scroll back down. So one atmosphere to 760 
and when you divide that you get 0 0.99 atmospheres and that makes sense 755 is close to 760 and then going the other way 1.45 atmospheres converted to tor so we're going to be multiplying by the tor this time over one that cancels and we end up with 1102 i think one 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 zero two tor so conversions are very simple um, so go ahead and take a look at the ctqs over on the right hand side of the screen there and i've also got a ted ed video on the kinetic molecular theory so you can take a look at that uh, by clicking on the the little screenshot up here in the corner so that's that take a look at those ctqs and um, have fun working with pressures <laughs>